nice a day to get hung. Sometime I'd like to hear what you consider the right kind of day for us. trouble just for us. You pick up the supplies and get back to mine. I'll see you in a couple of days. You sure picked a gay time to come to town. There shouldn't be any shortage of funerals for you to go to. Get going. jury of the people and found guilty. Guilty of murder. Have you got anything to say before I pass sentence? Would it change anything if I did? No. But you could do one decent thing before you die. You could tell us what you know about Andrew Kane. He's in town. Why don't you ask him? Because I'm asking you. Did Kane pay you and Myers to murder Hopkins? If he did, it sure wasn't enough, was it? Why be a fool, Slade? You're hanging for a man who won't even remember your name tomorrow morning. Well, I guess it doesn't make any difference then, anyway. All right. The sentence is death. To be executed immediately. Gentlemen, this court is dissolved. We'll communicate with you as your services are needed. Thank you. Well, good to see you, Rick. Same to you, Jim. Hey, that mind of yours is certainly keeping you fit. Keeping me a little rich, too. When do you find time to run your newspaper with all this hanging going on? Oh, the town's in a mess, Rick. More grafters and murderers around than there are decent citizens. I noticed one of the former as I rode in. He had a fair trial. The evidence was conclusive. Nothing wishy-washy about the verdict, either. We're ready, Captain. like a good-natured fellow to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. He probably grinned from ear to ear when he shot Hopkins down in cold blood. I guess you know why I sent for you, Jeffrey. Yeah, but that's not the reason I came. What do you mean? I'm just here for a change of scene and a good time. Look, if there's any reforming or cleaning up to be done, wait till I leave town. We really need you, Rick. Not me. Reformers need enthusiasm. I'm afraid I've outgrown mine. Anyway, I thought we cleaned up this place about five years ago. No, it's worse than it ever was. Well, maybe we just went to a lot of trouble for nothing. Maybe the people don't want to clean town. You know better than that. No, I don't. I've been getting shot up ever since I can remember just trying to sell something maybe nobody wants to buy. But not this time, Cap. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. You can't be as disinterested as that, Rick. Well, can I? You just hang around and watch a disinterested man have nothing but a good time for a couple of days. Come on, Jim. Hey! 
thieves and snakes, a lot of you, took everything from me. You and your rotten, dirty city. Andrew Kane and his. Let me go! You'll all broil on Judgment Day! And that woman will burn the longest! <laughs> Who's she? Adelaide McCall, friend of Andrew Kane's. Mr. Kane is real big in the state. Yeah, but what about her? She came here to San Francisco a couple of years ago. I couldn't knife him for that. What'll it be, gents? Right, too. You like her, Johnny? Alfie, not Johnny. Sure, I like her. She's got everything, my friend. She's beautiful. She's smart. She's democratic. She's the best there is, mister. And you won't find another on the coast like her. What's her picture doing hanging in the saloon if she's so high toned? What's wrong with a saloon? Well, it's not exactly a museum. She's proud to have that picture there, mister. That's the way she is. She's a lady and a friend of the people. There's nobody like her, I tell you. Nobody. Hey, Alby! lady and a friend of the people. She's a rattlesnake. She's a mighty pretty rattlesnake, though, Jim. Real pretty. Where's she from? Nobody knows. New York, Paris, maybe. Maybe not. He said a lady. Only on the surface. Only. <laughs> Jim, you're getting older every year. Let go of them all. Let go of them all. You can give this back to him when you've taught him what to use it on. Who are you? I'm the fellow that just took the whip from the fellow up there. Mr. Kane! You know me, don't you? No, sir, I don't. You should. You took everything I owned. You wrecked me. You did it all legal, too. You're never gonna do it to no one else. What do you want to do with him, Jim? Your man, Mr. Kane. He tried to kill you. Why, that's most generous of you, Martin. This man is obviously insane. I think he'd better be given over to the asylum. Take him up to my office, Charlie. Martin, I see you've taken the law into your own hands again. You mean the hanging of your gunman? That's right. My gunman? That's a rather reckless accusation to make, isn't it? I made it yesterday in my newspaper, if you'd like to sue me. I'm not as interested in suing as I am in the end of this mob rule. But you are cloaking in respectability under the title Vigilantes. We didn't expect you to approve of us. It goes much further than disapproval. I intend to hold you personally responsible for all these lynchings. I look forward to the day we're all held responsible for our actions. In the meantime, do you intend to exact the death penalty from just anyone who happens to be a friend of mine? No, but I admit it's grounds, you know. This city has established courts of law. That are so full of corruption, a decent man would be a fool to be tried there. Martin, I'm warning you, you're stretching your authority and your luck. Thank you, sir, for your kind and effective attention. I was afraid he might hit her. Drive on, Palmer. Ever see him before? Who? Your tall friend, of course. Know him? No. He's quick, very effective. Yes, very. His name is Rick Nelson. He was extremely active in the vigilantes five years ago. Why did you ask if I knew him? He seemed quite interested in you. 
What do you want to know about him? What he's doing in town, just how involved he is in the new vigilante movement, and anything else he'll tell you. All right. You should be able to manage that while I'm in Hollister tonight. I'll manage. You've stood by and watched a dozen men killed. Why'd you have to interfere this time? I'm a firm believer in law and order. Natural born defender of the weak. Besides, I wanted to show off in front of the girl. Hmm. A lot of decent citizens around here aren't going to thank you. Who is this cane that everybody's so down on him? Probably the biggest menace the state's ever had. That's a tall order. What's he done? Murder? Robbery? Bribery? Does he make a living at it? Rick, this man is out to take over the whole state. And he's close to succeeding. He's a dangerous fanatic. Believes in his destiny. You seem to be hanging practically everybody in sight. He sounds like a good candidate. No, he's too smart. He's got a lot of people on his side. How come? Talks big, makes big promises. He's got an organization. Every crook and scoundrel in California supports him. Well, the girl didn't look much like a scoundrel to me. Rick, please. Listen to me. No, I'm not getting mixed up in it. Look, I'm only going to be here two days, and I'm more interested in enjoying the corruption than cleaning it up. I'm sorry, Jim, but that's the way it is. All right, Rick. By the way, if you'd like a little excitement tonight, Mrs. Martin and the ladies of the church are having a charity supper. Oh, sure, Jim, I wanted to have a good time, but... Golly, I didn't want to go that far. Whenever you're ready, mister. Hundred dollars. A hundred? And a hundred better. I fold. Can't draw a card. I'm in. I'm out. You seeing me? Well, now you know I shouldn't. But I'd probably just throw the money away on food and clothing if I didn't, so... And a hundred more, just in the interest of good fellowship. Can't we just play without all this talk? I caught you. Queens and threes. Pure skill. Luck doesn't enter. Get away from my chair. Ideal, same game. Mind if I take a hand, boys? This is a man's game. Up until just now. Talk for yourself. I usually do. Thank you, gentlemen. And you too, sir. Chips, please. Thousand dollars, right? I'm sure it is. What's the game? Stud, five card. Five hundred. Five hundred and five hundred better. There's a thousand in dust there, according to the assayer. I'm in for that. I hope the assayer's honest. 500 and a thousand more. Unfortunately, that's all the cash I have on me. We'll take your marker, man. No markers in this game. We weren't talking about yours. Have to pay to see that whole card, mister.
By the way, you never did get a chance to call my hand. The bet was a thousand dollars, I believe. I'll fold. You can see it for nothing. Four flush. I'll have to remember that about you. <laughs> you enjoyed the fight. I should have thanked you before. Oh, that's all right. I just thought maybe you hadn't noticed it. I heard a lot of things about you today, Rick. Well, now, that's funny. I heard a lot of things about you, too. I don't suppose they were any too complimentary. Oh, everything except your choice of friends. Maybe your friends just don't like my friends. That seems to be the idea. What did your friends tell you about Andrew Kane? Well, they seem to regard him as about five inches lower than a snake. Oh, they could be wrong. There's always that possibility. What do you think? No, I had never even heard of the gentleman until today. Never heard of him? Well, we're a little hard of hearing up our way. Say what you want about him, but he's one of the best known men in the state. Hmm. Well, I've been camping out. Oh? Then obviously you're not working with the vigilantes. No. And obviously you found out what you wanted to know. <laughs> obviously. to build a city like San Francisco. Man like Andrew Kane? Yes. He's going to build that into a great city and California into a great state. All by himself? If he has to. But he won't. As soon as people find out what he wants to do, they'll flock to him. I heard he'd done quite a bit already. He has. And stepped on quite a few toes doing it. Maybe. But he wouldn't have to if they'd get their toes out of the way. Well, that's one way of looking at it. You know as well as I do, there's never been any progress without a few people getting hurt. And it's always been just fine, except for those few people. How do you figure in? I believe in him. And so would you if you'd talk to him. What would my friends say? What does it matter? How about you? I'm my own man, Addie. I walk right down the middle, pick fights on both sides. He's going to run this state. If you were in with him, you'd have everything you wanted. Let's see. That cane sure is influential, all right. At the moment, I'm not recruiting for Kane. You still want to be your own man? Why, sure I do, Addie. I got the feeling you're trying to bribe me. I don't think you're offering enough.
crazy. What are you doing here? Well, I was relaxing over a quiet drink. What made you bust in like that? You made some enemies or something? It's my friends I need protection from. Why aren't you back at the mine? A girl smiled at me on the street. Well, I'll admit that's rare enough to call for a celebration, but we still have to have somebody at the mine. Bradley can handle it. Some of that equipment we needed won't be in for two or three days. And that sure is empty, isn't it? It was full when I left. Must have sprung a leak. Yeah, well, we like clean up a little. Huh? We'll go down and see what we can do about you buying another. I know this sounds silly, but have you been walking? Yeah. Did you lose your mind or your horse? You know, I think we ought to leave right away and get back up to the mine. Why? Because no matter what you say, you're going to get mixed up in this vigilante thing. Not a chance. Somebody will take a shot at you, and before you know it, you'll be up on a white horse, cleaning out some of my favorite people. You've got nothing to worry about. I'm just here for relaxation. Well, you're having a great time taking long walks and losing all your money and getting your face cut up. I walked into a tree. It's a pretty educated tree. I wrote your note. I wouldn't get mixed up with her if I was you. She's the one that's going to get you into this whole mess. Is it just my business you poke your nose into, or do other people qualify? I'll be around if you need me for anything. I won't, unless I get any more mail that needs to be read. Yes, sir. I'd like to see Miss McCall. Tell her it's Rick Nelson. I'll see if Miss Adelaide is in, sir. Would you follow me, please? Kindly wait in here, please. Mr. Rick Nelson is in the library to see you. Tell him I'll be right down. Yes, ma'am. I'm afraid I have a very unpredictable temper. I'm sorry. I have an idea you don't say that very often. I don't. But when I do, I mean it. Can I fix you a drink? No, thanks. Why bother to apologize to me, Addie? I can't mean much in your life. I like you, Rick. And I think you could be an important man around here. What do you do? Collect important men? <laughs> I like intelligent men, men with purpose and ambition. My ambition gets to be kind of a strain sometimes. It won't let you alone. It keeps nagging you in the middle of the night. Surely you must have some sort of plans for yourself. Oh, but that's different. Making plans can be good and healthy. Ambition can be downright sickly. But it can get a lot of things done. Rick, you were right about what you said. The only reason I hunted for you tonight and went out with you was to find out what you were doing in town. Well, I never would have guessed. But on the way home, I got to thinking, you could be a very valuable man for Mr. Kane. Why are you always so formal about him? Won't he let you call him by his first name? Oh, be serious. I'm not a valuable man for anyone. I thought I told you that, Addie. I want you with us, Rick. Why? Because there's going to be a big struggle for this state in the next year. And if you're not with us, you'll be against us. That's usually the way. And I don't want us to be enemies. Well, I might cramp our style a little at that. Now, look, Eddie. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what Kane's up to, and I'm just not interested. Well, you're going to have to pick sides sooner or later. Well, then let's make it later. Now, you've told me why you invited me over, but you haven't asked me why I came. 
Why? I just wanted to make sure I could do that any time I felt like it. You know something? I can. version of people I don't know following me. Gibson, see if our guest is comfortable. We'll sail as soon as it's light. Aye, aye, sir.
Gentlemen, we are about to achieve the final phase of our plans, and I believe there are one or two things which we should discuss and settle. Shall I leave, Andrew? Oh, no, of course not. I want you to know all the details. By this time next month, Mr. Winfield Holbert here will be our new United States Senator from California. That finally means that we have complete control of the state, in addition to any number of lucrative possibilities for us all. Aren't you being a trifle premature? No. We need only one more state senator to ensure Winfield's appointment, and the elections in Hollister next week will take care of that. I thought things had gone sour down there. Nothing that can't be fixed. Wasn't the man we sent down arrested? We can send another. What if he's brought to trial and decides to talk? He won't. I said everything would be fine. How much did that election cost us? Too much, if you ask me. Then I'll make it a point not to ask you. You can't buy votes for nothing. And you can't get federal patronage unless we win the election. We're playing for millions and you quibble about thousands. I wish you didn't have to be so blunt about buying votes and patronage. You can save those counterfeit sensibilities for your maiden speech in the Senate. I see no need for that attitude from you. I have only to remind you that when we were picking a man for this appointment and decided that we needed a fatuous non-entity, you were the unanimous choice. There's no need to fight among ourselves. None at all, as long as my orders are obeyed. What do you mean? I told you to withdraw your advertising from Martin's newspaper. But after all, Andrew, I have a business. By the grace of me, you have a business. Your logic in supporting the very man who would like to hang you is to be charitable, idiotic. All right. Thank you. I have here the <clears throat> final order of business. Since in a very short while the people will have spoken and Winfield will be in Washington, I have drawn up this document to protect the great amount of work and money that we have invested on his behalf. What do you mean? In words of one syllable, Senator, this is our protection against any double-dealing, backbiting, or, shall we say, change of heart on your part. Now, just a minute. Yes? This is short and to the point. I, Senator Winfield Holbert, being perfectly aware that I obtained my high office through fraudulent means, do hereby agree to entrust all of the federal patronage accruing to me in my position as United States Senator to Andrew Kane, my benefactor. And there is where you sign. Andrew, you're joking. Believe me, I'm not. But the existence of a paper like that will be of no consequence as long as it isn't made public. Gentlemen, do you honestly wish to invest all of this money in Winfield Holbert? will be 3,000 miles away from your scrutiny and not have some sort of control over him? I won't sign it. Right there. Right there at the bottom, Senator. Specialty, Sadie. I got Shanghai. Shanghai? Rick Nelson, Shanghai. <laughs> you must have got mighty soft, Rick, since I used to know you. Shanghai? Buck, whiskey, the kid needs it. What happened to the $200 I had in my belt when I got here? Well, son, that's the fee for pulling you out of the water. I could have got 300 for you if I'd have sold you that captain over there. He's looking for a crew, Hong Kong. If he keeps on drinking, I may be able to sell him to another captain I know who's looking for a crew to get him to Sydney. <laughs> Sadie, you'd sell your own father. He left last night. Singapore. 
Now, tell me, who shanghaied you? A playful friend. Andrew Kane? I didn't mention any names. You didn't need to. What do you know about Kane? Well, he's what you might call an associate of mine. Oh. I support him politically. We agree on how things should be run, and I run them that way, and he sees that nobody bothers me. What do you know about Adelaide McCall? Not much, dear. I know she thinks you should either be on her side or in China. Her? <laughs> Rick, I don't know what I've been doing for life since you went away. Robin drunks? They ain't the same. <laughs> tell me more about this cane. Well, I'll tell you this much. He's gotten too big for you to handle if you're thinking about joining up with them vigilantes again. Who said anything about joining the vigilantes? I'm a miner now. Sometimes it pays to know the right people. If he gives you the chance, throw in with him. Thanks again, Sadie. Hong Kong's a dirty town. Oh, wait a minute. That sidekick of yours was in earlier this evening looking for you. Who, Shorty? Mm -hmm. uh, I think he had a little too much to drink. He's in there sleeping it off. How much you get for him? Just the usual 300. You'll have to give it back, Sadie. I'll come over and pay you later. Ah, oh, save your money, Rick. I sold him to that captain that I'm just about to sell. with us again? Where have you been? I looked in every... So How'd I get here? What time is it? Tomorrow night. And by all rights, you should be on your way to Bombay. Sadie. She invited me for a cup of rum and tea. The last thing I remember was the flower pattern on the saucer as it came up and hit me in the face. Now listen to me. I gotta go out and do a few things. I won't be back for quite a while. I want you here when I get back. Sure. I mean it. If you need anything, send out for it, but don't move. What are we going to do? Plenty. You just stay here where I'll know where to find you. I didn't want to go to China. Thanks for thinking of me anyway. Just trying to figure what would impress you most. A good spanking Nothing or... Nothing you could do would impress me at all. Does everyone who tips his hat to you end up on a boat? No, I saved that for you. Was it your idea or Kane's to have me shanghaied? I handled my own affairs, Mr. Kane. Wasn't even in town. I like you, Addie. And I'd like to see you now and then. But I'm not sure I'm physically strong enough to keep up the courtship. Well, that gives you an easy excuse for your failure, then. Am I going to fail, Addie? You have. You don't suppose we've been using the wrong tactics with each other? What's the matter with you? Any other man would be too afraid or too proud to come back after what I did. Well, to tell you the truth, I was a little upset. How did you get away? Maybe we better keep that a secret, just in case. You're up to something. Don't get the idea I trust you a bit. All right. What do you want? I want to talk to you about that proposition you made me last night. Which one? You said Kane would make me a big man, but eventually I'd have to pick sides, and so, well, maybe you pounded a little sense into my head, so to speak. So all of a sudden, you'd like to join us. I'd like to talk about it. I want you to introduce me to Kane. He wouldn't be interested. He might. Would you care to come in the house, Mr. Nelson? 
Oh, don't be silly, Andrew. He's no more sincere than... Uh, you know that I always talk to anyone who wants to see me, Eddie. But you can't trust him. Let's find out. Won't you come in? Join us if you like. You'll have to admit that your offer is open to some suspicion, Mr. Nelson. Why? Everybody knows about your activities with the vigilantes five years ago. Why should we believe that your sympathies have changed? Perhaps you didn't know anything about my sympathies in the first place. They were fairly obvious. Five years ago, the vigilantes were made up of the most influential men in San Francisco. Today, that doesn't seem to be the case. You'd have me believe that you're an opportunist. I'd have you consider the possibility. No, you were much too good at your job. For which I was grubstaked into one of the richest mines in the state. Then what do you need with us? A well, mine owner can always use powerful friends in the legislature. Men of purpose and ambition. That's very true. I wish you were sincere, Mr. Nelson. I could really use you. I won't press it. Think it over. Come and see me tomorrow. Addie, will you show Mr. Nelson out, please? He's one of Martin's best friends. I said I'd use him, not believe him. If he's really trying to worm his way in, he'll do at least one job for us to impress us with his sincerity. Were you really serious about what you said? Only time will tell. No, I, I don't think I'd better kiss you tonight, Eddie. It hasn't been working out too well. said to stay here, not to move. Oh, that. Oh, I just thought it'd be good for you to spend an evening at home. Shorty. You want me, Cap? Yeah. I'm worried about Rick. He's not exactly restful on my nerves, either. <laughs> Frankly, I think he drinks too much. Spending too much time with Kane's girl. She could be a bad influence on him. She could be a bad influence on me, too, if I had time to spare for her. Shorty, you can help me. I don't know the first thing about running a newspaper. You're Rick's friend. I wish you'd try to convince him of how much we need him. You're wasting your time, Cap. You mean you won't talk to him? Sure, I'll talk to him. But from where I said, it looks like it'd be a question of who could influence him most, me or the girl. I think she'd win. Just a minute. Charge this to Rick Nelson. Mind if I drive home with you? I can't see how it would matter if I did. Well, it sure was a quiet night last night. You could hear a body drop. Rick, if you are going to be with us, I'd appreciate it if you'd forget what happened. That's a good idea, Addie. Make a fresh start and see if we can get a little further than we did on the first one. Get further? Yeah, find out little things about each other. I'd like us to be more than just business associates, if you know what I mean. I understand perfectly well what you mean. You showed quite a bit of interest in me the other night. 
And I'd like to know whether it was only to get me into the organization. Is it important? You may not believe it, but it is to me. Rick, are we through trying to hurt each other? I think it's about time. Well, as I told you, at first I, I was trying to find out some things for Andrew. Then I really began to like you. But you took care of that in a hurry. Yeah, I wasn't acting very bright that night. What can we do about it now? You made a suggestion. We might try sort of a fresh start, if you wanted to. That's what I want. You're quite a girl. I think we're going to get along fine. I'm not at all convinced of your sincerity, Nelson, but I've decided to take a chance with you. I won't come cheap. Give me an idea. A new railroad coming through Sonora is running about 20 miles from my mine. I want it detoured. Modest request. There'll be more. And what do you do in return? What I'm told. All right, I'll see if you really mean it. One of my men was arrested in Hollister last week. He comes up for trial tomorrow. He could be very dangerous to me. You want me to get him out? That's right. I won't do any killing. I'm glad to hear it. I'm opposed to it on principle myself. Bring him to me. I'll get him out on a boat. I'll look the situation over this afternoon and deliver him tonight. Fine. You do this, you'll be in line for really big things with me. Things worthy of your exorbitant expense. Just don't forget to warp those railroad tracks in my direction. Oh, and uh, by the way, I don't know whether you've noticed, but I'm sort of interested in Addie. I've noticed. No objections? Plenty of them. But you and Addie impress me as being people who do pretty much what they want. I like her a lot. So do I. No and no again. I'm not going to get mixed up in any vigilante movement. Now look, either you come in with us or we clean you up too. Rick, you know how glad I am to have you with us. I'm just not too sure this is the way to do it. Well, what do you suggest? I like to do things more in the open. Look, Jim, you're up against a really smart man this time. You can hang every two-bit crook in California and never touch him. I just can't believe he's taken in by your offer. Well, he probably isn't. But when I deliver the prisoner to him, he may change his mind. That prisoner's important to us. He was buying votes. He's the first one of Kane's men who's willing to talk. Well, then Kane should be grateful to get him back. Look, Jim, you want me to come in with you? Let me do it my way. Do it any way you like. And then come on up to the mine and tell me how it worked out. What do you think you'll get on him? How do I know? But I want it to be on Kane himself, not some hireling in his organization. All right. Go ahead, Rick. You'll arrange with the jailer? Yeah. What made you change your mind? Oh, Kane's got a girl I'm interested in. All right, so maybe I do like this town. Maybe I do want to see it run right. And you could never pass up a chance to be a hero. They always shoot at me and pin the medals on you. any difference whether Martin had arranged it or not. We could have broken in with a dull toothpick. Did you talk to the jailer? Martin gave him the whole story. The prisoner died yesterday, so we're to pull up in a hearse tonight. They let us in, we pulled guns. That's got to look real enough to impress the fellow we're getting out. Well, they'll shoot off a lot of noisy guns. All right, right after midnight. The funny thing, some fella came to the jailer this afternoon and said there was going to be a break tonight. Who was it? The jailer shoved him in one of the cells so he wouldn't ruin everything. Maybe some of the other prisoners have some friends. Maybe. Come on, let's eat.
Maybe you think I don't feel silly. Shut up. Yeah. Who is it? Who is it? Undertaker. Oh, all right. Just a minute. Hey, what is this? You got a prisoner here by the name of Jack Myers. Get him out. Oh, now look, mister. Get him out. All right. All right. Get excited. Now, wait a minute. I don't want to get out of here. You're going out, whether you want to or not. Who are you? Never mind that. Get going. Say, what about me? Next time, brother. I'll be waiting. Just take it nice and easy. Nobody's going to get hurt. Why don't you get me out of here, too? What do you want to leave me in here for? I know a lot of important people in this town, and I'm going to get out somewhere or other. I'll speak to the mayor. I... You better get in there with him. Tea. If it's all the same with you, I'll have malaria instead. You got an extra room here? Always got room for people alike. You like Rick Nelson? <laughs> yeah! He hands me a lot of laughs. Yeah, well, here's one that'll double you up. He's outside, all shot to pieces. Where? I got him out on the dock in a hearse. Well, that's a cheerful atmosphere for a sick man. All right, bring him in. I'll get a place ready. Have you got somebody you can send for Jim Martin? What do you want with him? Rick wants him. All right. And don't sell Rick to anybody until he's well enough to work. Can't bring any charges because Myers was killed attempting to escape. Kane's completely in the clear unless you testify against him. And then you'd be an accomplice. How bad is his wound? It was just a flesh wound, but he ought to take it easy for a while. I want you to run a story that I was killed. What do you think that would accomplish? It may help to keep me alive until I can settle with Kane. Anything that's done about Kane has got to be done in a legal and orderly way. All right, I'll swear him in before I kill him off. No, I mean it, Rick. Well, there's plenty of time to worry about that later. Just get it in the paper that I'm dead so I can get some rest. and we all had a lot of fun. <laughs> I saw it at breakfast. But you knew about it last night. Of course. Aren't you going to say good morning? The senator's oversensitive about being ignored. It makes him think of his home life. You had him killed, didn't you? That's right. 
And I thought it very efficient. Andrew, how well do you think you know me? What a peculiar question. Because it's obvious you don't know me at all. I was in love with Rick. I thought you were beginning to be. It wasn't beginning, it was already there. I hope you can see how impossible it was. He was still working with the vigilantes. That didn't matter to me one way or the other. I know. That's why I had to do your thinking for you. You made your first big mistake. Why? You thought you could do anything and I'd stick by you. Won't you? I saw this two hours ago. I've already had my hysterics. And I've already started you to the end of a rope. What sinister words, Eddie. My maid is on her way over to Martin's newspaper right now. She's carrying that agreement you had the senator sign the other night. It's in an envelope with instructions to open. If I'm not there in one hour. What is she talking about? You're lying, Eddie. And you can imagine some of the other things I found in the desk. You'll never get a trial, Andrew. You'll be lynched five minutes after those papers are made public. I guess you're right, Abby. I don't seem to know you very well. I'm only giving you this warning because I'd like to see you run for it. You're wrong. I know the humiliation of running would be five times as hard as death for you. I'd never run, Eddie. Andrew, how can you just sit there? You take the gun away from her, I'll be glad to get up. I told you that letter was stupid, but you, you always know everything. Why, I'll be impeached before I'm even appointed. How do you have my full permission to shoot him in five seconds if he doesn't shut up? Now, what can I do to make you forget all this? You can't do anything. And if by any chance you should get out of this, Andrew, I'll kill you myself. You can't let her get away. She won't get away. Do you realize what you've done? You've ruined my reputation, my career. Your reputation's been ruined for years, and you've had no career that I haven't given you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got work to do. But the letter! That letter will be destroyed within 24 hours if I have to burn down San Francisco to do it. It's already been read and you can't destroy witnesses. Why not? Here's the envelope your maid brought me, Miss McCall. It's all very mysterious. I'll explain it. This envelope contains a number of documents. One in particular could completely ruin Andrew Kane. Where did you get them? I took them out of his desk. Why did you do that? What does it matter? As I understand it, the main purpose of the vigilantes is to get Andrew Kane. That's right. It occurs to me that some of those documents must implicate you. I suppose they do. But the point is, what will you do about Andrew if I turn these over to you? If the evidence is sufficient, we'll bring him to trial. I don't want that. Why not? If he has a trial, there's always the possibility he'll get out of it. According to the Code of the Vigilantes, he is entitled to that chance. Not in my book. These are conclusive proof. Bribery, fraud, murder, anything you want. And it shouldn't be difficult to get a conviction. Look, Mr. Martin, I could have killed him easily half an hour ago. Well, why didn't you? You were a friend of Rick's. He was part of your organization. I, I think he would have liked it if I let you handle it. And I will. But only if you hold a trial and hang Cain. Hang him today. Quite frankly, I'm a little appalled at you. Well, I don't care what you are at me. You do it my way or you won't get these papers. Miss McCall, you're under arrest. As captain of the vigilantes, I'm placing you under arrest as a material witness. You'll be confined to this office. Now I'll take charge of your belongings.
What do you mean she's under arrest? Where have you got her? In my office. It's a good, secure building a three-year-old child could kick down. She won't get away. Jim, what's happened to your mind? It's not Addie's getting out I'm worried about. It's Kane. I know, I know. I thought of that. I left several of the boys with her. This girl comes into your office with evidence 150 men have been trying a year to get, and she gets arrested. I had to, Rick. She was getting stubborn. She might have disappeared with everything. I don't blame her. All she wanted was to get him hung right away. There's a girl who knows what she's talking about. Are we moving? Yes. Get down to Martin's office and see if Addie's all right, and then meet me outside Joyner's Hall in half an hour. Kane's addressing a political rally there tonight. I know. You mean I have to listen to him talk? He won't be talking long. What are you planning, Rick? I'm going to kill Kane before he kills Addie. Are you still here? No, I just left. Are you alive or dead? I'm alive. You want me to tell Addie that? Yeah, I don't want to walk in on her and have her fainting all over the place. Her reaction to me may be even more startling. We'll have to take that chance. I'm not going to let you do it, Rick. You can't stop me. I give you my word. Kane will be arrested in the morning. He's going to be killed tonight. No, Rick. He's going to be tried in vigilante court. Not Andrew Kane. Andrew Kane. With the evidence we've got, we can get a conviction. How can you arrest him? He's got more hired thugs than you have, vigilantes. There's still such a thing as right and wrong, Rick. When the people of San Francisco realize what sort of a scoundrel Kane really is, they'll support us. And you'd turn the town into a battleground. What do you want to do, kill off half the population? You go out and shoot Kane down tonight, that's murder. And friend or no friend, I'll arrest you for murder. I know that, Jim. That's far enough, mister. Be careful with that thing. It might go off, and I've got on a clean shirt. What are you doing here? I came at the request of a very dear friend. Turn up the light. You don't think I'd carry a gun when I come to call on a lady. What do you want with her? I want to wrestle. Now, wait a minute. Don't lose your temper. He says, what do you want with her? I came to tell her that Rick Nelson is still alive. That's not what it said in the paper. Well, don't believe everything you read. Now, do I get to see her or don't I? All right, she's in the office. But don't try anything cute, unless you're bulletproof. Miss McCall? What do you want? I'm only here to serve you, ma'am, and my name is Shorty. Rick's friend? I had that honor, ma'am. You were with him last night. Ours was the perfect friendship. Sit down, Shorty. I'm awfully glad you came to see me. From what I read in the paper, you were sort of lucky to get away yourself. I wish it had been the other way around. Why does he make me do these things? Look, Addie, Rick's hardly dead at all. I only came around to break it to you gently. What are you talking about? Rick never was dead. He meant to tell you that as soon as he got around to it. Are you telling me the truth? I didn't walk this far to lie. Why didn't he come himself? He was afraid you might faint or something. <laughs> I probably would have. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't feel any symptoms coming on, do you? No, not a symptom. Be going. Oh, where is he now? Oh, he had some unfinished business to attend to, but don't worry, he's all right. He'll be around later. <laughs> you sure are pretty. On behalf of our next United States Senator from the state of California, Mr. Winfield Holbert, I want to thank every one of you here for this enthusiastic welcome. As you know, gentlemen, we have already been attacked by the opposition in an effort to discredit me and my party. We have been maligned in the press. We have been slandered by word of mouth. There have been riotous acts, acts of violence, in an effort to remove us from power. But I solemnly swear to you 
When it becomes necessary, I intend to meet violence with violence, force with force. <laughs> and if the time comes, I know that I can count on each and every one of you for his loyal support. <laughs> Mark my words, gentlemen, you will find that San Francisco is going to be as big as New York someday. The way the West is growing, the entire state is going to be Gentlemen, gentlemen, I give you Andrew Kane, our great leader. I give him right back to you, gentlemen. The biggest thief and murderer in California. Good evening, Nelson. I wasn't aware that you were still with us. You can't win all the time. Maybe you'll have better luck next time you try and ambush me. I understand you were attempting to deliver a prisoner from jail. You should know. You're the one that thought of it. Coming from anyone else, I might resent that. I knew a fellow once that used to do his own killing instead of hiring it done. Are you trying to create the impression that I'm a coward? You catch on real fast. I'm not armed at the moment, but if you would care to name the time and place, I'd be glad to accommodate you. I'm not doing anything tomorrow morning. I might be found riding along the beach. Six o'clock? You better make it later. If you're gonna get killed, you ought to get a good night's sleep first. And the weapons? I'll leave that up to you. Shotguns. I always figured they were good for shooting buzzards or rats. He may not look like it, but he's my second. Gentlemen, I'll be back later to arrange the details of this execution. Kane doesn't know what a fair fight means. If you don't want to feel responsible for Rick's death, you've got to do something about this duel. I'm sorry, Miss McCall. I've done everything I can. There's no reasoning with him. Well, have him arrested. Have him shanghaied. I don't care what you do, only keep him away from Kane. I don't approve of it any more than you do. But there's no law against dueling in California. Well, at least take me to talk to him. What good would that do? I don't know, but it's worth trying. It isn't safe for you in the streets. That's one reason you're here. The reason I'm here is because I'm under arrest for once having had the misfortune to meet Andrew Kane. Oh, look, mister. You all right, Captain? Yeah, I'm all right. Better watch that window. Did I hear you say I wasn't safe in the streets? I've changed my mind. It's safer anywhere for you than here. Come on, this way. Keep that window covered, Johnny. I don't know why you made his shotguns. He might miss you with a pistol. I might miss him, too. Personally, I've always been partial to a good, heated argument. You sound as if you were the one getting shot at. Well, it usually ends up that way. Come in. One job I wouldn't mind helping you with. What are you doing here? Don't you know Kane's gunning for you? I understand you're gunning for Kane. That's right. Don't do it, Rick. He's not worth getting killed for. I wasn't planning on getting killed. He won't give you an even break. He'll have you shot in the back. I know him. But I haven't any choice, Eddie. You won't change your mind, not even for me. 
I'd do anything in the world for you, Addie. Except what you just asked. Remember, with this, you've got to be kind of close. Congratulate you. Not if you don't feel like it. I'm sorry if you don't like the way I handle this, Jim. It's a matter of opinion, I suppose. I have an idea they'll be doing things your way from now on. But don't ever invite me in again. Should we go, Eddie? Well, I'm afraid that's up to Mr. Martin. I'm still under arrest. She was mixed up in almost everything Kane did. I don't think she ought to do things like that anymore. A lot of people think she ought to be tried. <laughs> I'll ride up and see you people someday. Thanks, Jim.